That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Mayor of Easttown, the seven episode limited series which uh, played on HBO Max and just wrapped up uh, May 30th, 2021, directed by Craig Zobel. What do we know Craig Zobel from? Compliance, uh, 2012 film I saw at Sundance, which is excellent, uh, starring Anne Dowd, uh, based on a true story, uh, and Z for Zachariah, uh, as well as The Hunt. Okay, I think this is the first series we've done that isn't a documentary. Well, no, Halston. That's correct. Well, uh, so Mayor of Easttown was not on my radar. You had mentioned it a couple of times, mm -hmm. and you put it on, mm -hmm. and it had my attention from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I think primarily because Kate Winslet is so good. Yes. But um, overall, I really, really enjoyed the series. There's a lot going on. There is a lot going on. So I'm... this is going to be a test to my recapping skills because I'm going to try to break it down quickly. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. The story revolves around a detective named Mayor, who's played by Kate Winslet. She works and lives in a town called East Town, which is in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do we know about Mayor? She's divorced. She has or had two children, a son named Kevin who killed himself and a daughter named Chiobon. Siobhan. Siobhan, Chobani, <laughs> uh, who lives with her. It appears she's like about to graduate high school mm -hmm. and Mare's mother, Helen, lives with her. So Mare's divorced from Frank. Frank also lives in East Town. Uh, they, uh, Mare's like a high school, like football or basketball star, <laughs> kind of a grouchy lady. <laughs> But anyway, in the backdrop, a year prior, a young woman named Katie Bailey went missing. Mm -hmm. And she's yet to be found. And some people in the community, primarily Katie's mom, Dawn, feel that Mayor hasn't done enough to find the girl. Because she's the lead detective on the case. Okay, so there's that. Then we also find... A young woman named Erin, like a 17-year-old, who has a one-year-old kid, and this girl gets killed. So the series revolves around who killed Erin, where's Katie Bailey, are these two things connected? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because Mayor, there's like sort of like negative magnifying glass on that department and her detective skills, I guess, the chief of police feels that or he's told he needs to bring on someone from the county, a detective Zabel, mm -hmm. played by Evan Peters. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it comes to Aaron, Aaron has a baby's daddy named Dylan, some 17 year old douchebag boy. Mm -hmm. And he has a new girlfriend named Brianna and Brianna cannot stand Aaron. So on the night Aaron's killed, we're told that like, she's been talking to this guy online and she plans to meet him at like some party in the woods where all these other teenagers are going to be. But when she gets there, she's been catfished by her baby daddy's girlfriend, Brianna. Mm -hmm. And they circle her and basically like dog her out and whoop her ass. Okay. So we think obviously Dylan has something to do with it or Brianna. And someone filmed that. It, yeah. They also film it and put it on social media stupidly. But things we learn about Dylan are that's not his baby because after a paternity test, we realize that it's not his. He is violent and threatens like Aaron's best friend not to talk and threatens his girlfriend about not talking because she says like, oh, you weren't at home. Like I lied to the police and said you were home with me that night, but you weren't. But he didn't do it. Brianna didn't do it. Okay. There's a deacon. Mm hmm. So the local church, there's a deacon, I forgot his name, Deacon, uh, uh, deacon Burton, who has transferred to this parish after he, there was like some allegations of him being inappropriate with a younger woman. So of course we're like, well, he did it. When <clears throat> uh, Mayor and Detective Zabel go to speak to the deacon, he's acting really weird. And they're like, oh, can we check your phone? Like, just give it to us now or we'll come back with a search warrant. So he gives it but is very paranoid. We also see him dumping something into the river at one point, <laughs> but he ends up being cleared because yes, he did have a relationship with Aaron, but it was more like providing her counsel. And on the night Aaron was killed, she called him asking for help 
and asked him to pick her up after she got beat up. So the reason the priest was act the deacon was acting weird is because he has communicated with Aaron. He did see her on the night she was killed, but he was just giving her a ride to the park where she was ultimately killed. And what he dumped over the into the river was Aaron's bike. Because he had put Aaron's bike in the back of his Volvo station wagon when he gave her the ride. So he's been cleared. Okay. Aaron's dad, mm -hmm. Kenny, Kenny, is very upset. And, you know, initially it's like, well, maybe he did it. But then he goes and attempts to kill Dylan, the supposed baby daddy. But is not successful. He just harms him. Okay. The dad, Kenny, has two cousins, Billy and John. Mm -hmm. Okay. Billy's a single dude. John is married to a woman named Lori. Mm -hmm. And Lori is Mare's best friend. So throughout the first, like, four episodes, we see Mare sort of, uh, like, Lori is her, like, confidant, her best friend. Okay. So Aaron's dad, who tried to kill the baby daddy, he has these two cousins, Billy and John. So we find out that Aaron was having an inappropriate relationship with Billy. And they get a paternity test and they see that the DNA of the baby matches uh, Billy's. We also hear from Billy and John's dad, because he finally decides to talk to the police and says, you know, the night that that girl was killed, I came downstairs like at two in the morning because I heard some noise and I saw Billy in there covered in blood trying to do laundry. So of course we're like, well, he did it. But we find out that it was John who was having the inappropriate relationship with Aaron. Mm -hmm. So Mayor's best friend, Lori, her husband is the one who got Aaron pregnant. So that's his baby. So it's like episode, the episode six where John takes Billy to like go fishing, but it's ominous because we see a gun in like the tackle box. So we're assuming, oh, John's going to kill Billy because Billy knows the truth. But at the end of episode six, there's a cliffhanger where Aaron's best friend, whose name is uh, Jess. Jess, throughout the film, she's kind of been doling out information sporadically. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard to tell initially, like, who she's trying to protect because she steals Aaron's journals and burns them, but then keeps some of it and tells Dylan. She's been trying to save money because the baby needs, like, ear surgery. And, like, she tells Dylan where the money is. So we initially assume that he's stealing it from her, like, this dead girl. But end of episode six, Jess goes into the police and says, hey, I know some more things. And hands them this picture. So that's the cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. So the final episode, we find out that in the picture, it is um, Aaron, the dead girl, with John. Mm -hmm. So now the police know. So they, so Mayor runs out to the fishing area to stop John from killing his brother. John's put on trial. He's convicted and sentenced to prison for killing this girl. Confesses. He confesses all that. So, and the confession's a little crunchy. Like, he, does, he seems to be very forthcoming. Well, he all... said Aaron was wielding a gun and... He tried to stop her. And... Yeah, they, they they do a good job of making the audience think like something's not right, but then he confesses. So it's like, well, maybe he's just trying to make himself look like less of a monster, but he's he, he did it. Okay. So Lori, the guy who just got convicted, his wife, they have a son named Ryan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we find out earlier in the series that John has cheated on Lori before with some lady in town named Sandra. So Ryan one day is really upset and crying and Lori approaches him like, what's wrong? Talk to me. Is it your dad? Is he fucking around again with that same bitch? And the son says like, he just nods. He yes. just nods like, yes. But really what he was upset about was Ryan, the son found out John had been cheating. His dad had been cheating on his mom with this dead girl. And he decided he was going to take matters into his own hands. So he stole a gun lured the girl to the park, Aaron, and killed her. He claims that his intention was to scare her, but he ended up killing her. Freaks out, runs home, tells his dad, and his dad says, I'll take care of it. 
So the dad, John, and the brother, Billy, go and dispose of the body. So that's why Billy, the brother, was in the laundry room covered in blood. And the reason John took Billy to go fishing was because he was going to kill him to tie up any loose ends. And the reason John confessed is because he doesn't want his son, his adolescent son, to go to jail. The reason they find out that he did it is because there's an old man, like the very first episode, we see Mare getting a call to this older elderly couple's home. And it, it appears they call her all the time for crazy shit, like we can't find our spoons or there's a bird tapping at our window. So we see her there and we see that they have video surveillance, blah, blah, blah. So at the end of the series, we see that same old man whose wife has now died call and wants to talk to Mare. And he's just talking shit. But finally, she's like, what did you call me here for? And he says, oh, that one day that I called you about the graffiti, which is the same day that girl died, I noticed someone stole my gun, but then they put it back. So she's like, oh, so you're not missing the gun? And he's like, no, but I'm trying to tell you, like, that day my gun went missing and I know it was because of these things. And then after the killing, someone put the gun back. And it was important to know that a very specific type of gun was used in the murder, like a police issued gun. So she asked him, well, what kind of gun was it? And he says it's the Colt 45 or whatever that special <laughs> something, yeah. which because he used he's like a retired law enforcement agent. So she puts two and two together. She goes to the surveillance camera, pulls the footage. And who is it stealing the gun? But Ryan. So she what I think is the best like scene of the series is Mayor like hightails it to Ryan's school. And as soon as he sees her, this fool makes a break for it. Like he hops the fence and runs straight home. And he tells his mom, Mayor knows. So Mayor's best friend, Lori, Ryan's mom, she knew he did it, but much later. Mm -hmm. So Mayor calls the cavalcade and they roll up slow motion. The, cav and the cavalry? The, what did I say? Cavalcade? What does that mean? The, they get to have a cavalcade to, oh, I don't know. She you, called, I think you wanted to use cavalry. Probably. But she calls back up. They slow motion come up to the house and they take Ryan. So Ryan gets processed, sent to juvenile hall. The end, basically. Well, and then there's a reconciliation finally between Lori and... Yeah, which I think is a very... We can get into it because I think that's a very effective part of the story is how these two women have to deal with this. But yeah, this shit was riveting. Mm -hmm. So good. I would definitely recommend investing the six and a half hours. Mm -hmm. What did you like the most about the series? Um, I think Kate Winslet, uh, some of the supporting players, including Jean Smart. I uh, really like John Douglas Thompson as Chief Carter. Mm -hmm. uh, Julian Nicholson as Lori Ross. Like really great character work. Um, and even if it does get a little pulpy and a little messy, and there are one too many red herrings, like it is very, it's very rich storytelling. Uh, and there wasn't a moment, as in a lot of these even limited series where it feels like we're just stretching out to play for time to fill out, to pad a series, kind of like how I even felt about Big Little Lies. Um, yeah. But it was scripted by Brad Inglesby, uh, who wrote The Way Back with Ben Affleck, Run All Night, um, Out of the Furnace. But this is very similar uh, in tone, and I think it does a much better job of it, is what he was kind of trying to do with American Woman, uh, starring Sienna Miller, which has a very... Uh, similar set of a working class neighborhood and familial dysfunction that this I think is allowed to do so much better because we really sink into the characters. Uh, Evan Peters, uh, I, I also really liked, um, there, yeah, they're, it, they're just across seven episodes, almost every episode is punctuated with a really, uh, excellent sequence as well. So something I didn't explain is the missing girl, Katie Bailey. We find out that there's some creep in town who is kidnapping sex workers. Mm -hmm. And he he lives in like a house that also has like a pub attached to it and a pretty elaborate like underground situation. And he's holding these girls hostage. So that missing girl has been in this basement for forever. And they find out it's him. Uh, Detective Zabel, Aaron, Evan Peters' character, and Mayor go to confront him. And it's very like the end of Silence of the Lambs. It was yes. pretty tense. Yes. And in the melee, Evan Peters' character gets killed. And that's like episode four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is pretty shocking. Another character that really worked for me is there... 
so Dawn, the mother of the missing girl, you know, initially there's a lot of conflict or uh, tension between her and Mare because it's like, you haven't found my daughter, so I don't want to hear from you. But she has a friend, a black lady named Anita. Beth. Beth. Oh, I'm thinking of Anita Darling from Corella. <laughs> there's she, uh, th this black woman in town who she's Dawn is friendly with. And then Beth has a brother named Freddie mm -hmm. who's a drug addict. So like episode one, we see Mare having to chase Freddie down. Ultimately, Freddie dies from a drug overdose. But I think that subplot was very effective. Also, it's important to know that Freddie, the drug addict who overdosed, owned a home. And in, he was always scheming to get money, like breaking into people's homes. And at one point, he scams Dawn, the mother of the missing girl, by saying, like, disguising his voice and says, I have her, bring me $5,000 and I'll release her. And Dawn works at a gas station and it's kind of implied that she may steal money from the gas station. And of course, as the audience, we're like, girl, don't do this. Right. Like, you know, it's not real, but she does go. She doesn't steal the money. She puts fake money in the, the bag, but she finds out that it's Freddie who scammed her. And when she, because they get into a fight and like he takes his mask off. So she knows it's him. And he says, I'm sorry, Dawn. So in the end, after he's died, the sister Beth, she gives Freddie's house to Katie Bailey, the missing girl, so she can start a new life. So I like that. Also, another side plot is Guy Pierce is in the movie playing like a creative writing professor at some local college. And Richard he, Ryan. And he and Mayer have a dalliance. Well, I mean, it's more than that because in the end, they, he goes off to another college to teach, but... It's implied that she would like to see him again. So that was, you know, I felt like he didn't have anything to do, but that was something that happened. <laughs> he, he provides a kind of a light distraction. Um, so it's a serious like mystery drama, but there is some comedic uh, components to it, primarily between Mare and her mother, Helen. And I thought, is it Jean Smart? Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed her as Helen. Yeah, me too. Because they have a acerbic sort of like uh, <laughs> like banter between the two, and they have unresolved issues from like Mare's childhood. Also, Mare has a lot of trauma associated with her son who committed suicide. So that's another thing. That son had a kid with this other crackhead, and when he died, what? Nothing. Just when, a disparaging term. But. Sorry, drug addict. <laughs> when, well, you know, they play her... Well, yeah. I shouldn't say crackhead. Uh, but we don't know if she was on crack or not. But when the son dies, Mayor has to take care of the little boy. Mm -hmm. And she's grown attached to him. She loves him. But the mother, the drug addict, has trying to get her life back together and wants her son back. So there's some play about custody. And then at a point... Um, I forgot what I was going to say about that. She plants heroin on her. That's right. So Mare, I think her character is so great, which I'll probably end with. But like, yeah, Mare's problematic because she doesn't always do the right thing. So she steals heroin from like an evidence envelope and plants it on the mom to show she's an unfit mother. Because she's she's cleaned herself up enough to uh, request custody. file for custody. Yeah. In the end, the mom is like, I need to just go to rehab so you keep the boy. But, um, yeah, Helen is, her relationship with her daughter and how they reconcile that is very interesting. Also, because Helen stole the heroin, her boss, fi or her boss finds out she stole it. And he says, I like you, so I'm not going to fire you. I'm going to say that you're having a mental breakdown and you would need to go to, like, therapy. And her scenes with the therapist, which I think are, like, three... Mm, yeah, about that. I thought were very effective because usually in film or TV, the therapist is always like played so schmaltzy and corny, like just to. And I felt like this therapist actually seemed like she was doing what she should be doing, which is listening. Mm -hmm. And then we see growth from all the visits with Mare to the point where she is able to acknowledge that her son is dead. And she does that by he killed himself by hanging himself in the attic. So in the final episode, she goes into her house and opens the attic and goes up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you, what didn't you like? Oh my God, that daughter <laughs> Chiovani, Chiovani. Uh, oh, I just couldn't. Uh, stand played her. by Ang Anguri Rice from Nice Guys and The Beguiled remake. 
you know, superficially, I hated her hair. I hated her hair she so was, much. Uh, and she was that type of, like, high school student who's, I don't know. Her storyline is she's a lesbian. And she's making, in school, a documentary about her dead brother trying to understand why he did it. And even when she talks about it to her new girlfriend... It just, she just seems like a spoiled, sure. like, know it all kid. Like most teenagers. Oh, uh, uh, and you know, I, I don't know, for some reason she bothered me so much. <laughs> she did. She didn't bother me quite so much. I thought she had some nice moments. She's in, in one of the best scenes of the whole series, I think, is uh, there's uh, a moment where her ex girlfriend comes over. Oh my God. And it's set up very well because Jean Smart is trying to uh, seek, sneak, eat. sneak eat Hagen dazs and pulls it out of her mixed vegetables bag. And then the door, she's not expecting anyone and she's annoyed. That, so she hides it in the bread box or ice cream and answers the door. And it's the ex girlfriend, the drug addled ex girlfriend of Shaban who's like, I'm so sorry, I broke up with her. I miss her. Can I go wait for her in the basement in her room? And the grandma says, Yeah, whatever. And not knowing that. Siobhan was coming home with her new girlfriend to, you know, get busy in the basement. And when the new, the old girlfriend sees it, this happening, she screams and runs out and knocks Jean Smart over violently. To wait. Like she knocks her the hell out to so, the point where she has to go to the hospital. So Siobhan panics and calls uh, <laughs> an ambulance and then Kate Winslet comes back and she's all harried and she sees a bandit on Jean Smart's head. And she's like, well, that's all that happened to you? <laughs> it's done well. And also the funeral... Uh, not the funeral, the, um, where they're at the old woman who's died her home and the husband admits to having an affair with Helen. That was good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, I think just some really good writing, performance and character work. Um, it was shot by Ben Richardson, uh, who is probably best revered for Beasts of the Southern Wild, but also did Wind River and recently um, Those Who Wish Me Dead, which I believe we weren't a fan of how that film looked overall. Uh, but again, uh, the the uh, this particular kind of working class community uh, I think feels very relatable, um, mm -hmm. very engrossing. Uh, a lot of attention has been uh, afforded Winslet's uh, accent work as well. Apparently this is a very difficult accent to master. Um, yeah, I didn't know what she was trying to do, but she did it very well. Like, I'm not familiar with the accent she's supposed to have, but I thought she, whatever she's doing felt very believable to me. <laughs> um, lastly, I would say I really like seeing like a strong female character, like no nonsense, somewhat, I mean, she's still vulnerable. I really like um, that she sort of stomps around East Town without a care in the world. Specifically, uh, Brianna, the girlfriend of the douchebag, ex-boyfriend of the dead girl. There's a point where, because she stupidly filmed beating up Aaron, um, Mayor and Detective Zobel was able to go to arrest her like at her restaurant um, and embarrass her in front of all these people. So the dad of Brianna is harassing Mayor, like throws milk through her window and like pushes up on her at the gas station and Mare is so unbothered. Oh, she just gets loud. <laughs> yeah, but 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 she's very confident and mm -hmm. I really like that this character and this actor, you know, she seems like a normal sized person, like a size 12 or something and her face doesn't look like she's, you know, pumped full of, you know, Botox and filler and her, even her hair, which yeah, I had a hard time clocking if it was a wig, which is pretty good. Because it looks like she has like grown out blonde well, and, hair. And there are flashbacks that show her as completely blonde as well. Right, so I think maybe that was the wig. I don't know. But it was just very well done. I really liked how she looked. Um, I think there's nothing more satisfying than seeing uh, a woman of a certain age who has uh, does not care anymore what anyone thinks of her. Um, uh, you know, or, or anybody that's come to that point in their life. I think there's nothing more satisfying than seeing that. Um, Do you have anything else? Yeah, well, I was going to define cavalcade for you. Oh, well... Okay, let's wait. <laughs> a formal procession of people walking on horseback. Oh. Just to make sure. Well, that was kind of what it was. She slowly had the police cars behind her as she sure, approached the sure. house. What would you give this series? Four out of five. I would give it four out of five as well. Thank you. Bye.